Welcome to the 2014 Coaches Cabana Halftime Show, presented by Rattle and Hum Sports. I'm Brian Houston with Rattle and Hum Sports. Oklahoma State is tough enough and talented enough to beat anyone in the country. Just ask the defending national champion Florida State Seminoles. The Cowboys reminded everyone of that during their 37-31 loss to the Seminoles at AT AT&T Stadium last week. No, it wasn't a moral victory. No, it wasn't stunning that the Cowboys took the Seminoles down to the wire. But it served as a reminder to those who assume the Big 12 title will come down to Baylor and Oklahoma that the Cowboys will influence the path to the league crown. In fact, the Cowboys play the Bears and the Sooners in the season's final two games, and both games are in Stillwater. Other lessons learned from week number one? West Virginia may be more competitive than expected after losing to Alabama by only 10 points after being installed as a 26-point underdog. Quarterback Clint Trickett looked fine, throwing for 365 yards and a score while the Mountaineers had chances to take the lead in the fourth quarter. Texas Tech might need more time to improve on reducing penalties. That's what head coach Cliff Kingsbury wants this season. But the Red Raiders committed 15 penalties for 114 yards against Central Arkansas, which may be part of the reason why the Red Raiders only beat the Bears by seven points, despite quarterback Davis Webb throwing for 452 yards and four touchdowns. Texas began the Charlie Strong era with a defensive performance after the head coach's own heart holding North Texas to 94 total yards and seven points in a 38-7 victory in Austin. Meanwhile, TCU may have provided some clarity to its quarterback drama, as Trayvon Boykin threw for 320 yards and two touchdowns, while rushing for another as the Horned Frogs rolled over Samford. The Frogs honored their 1994 Southwest Conference champions without their former head coach, Samford's Pat Sullivan, who was recovering from neck surgery. With just one league game on the slate for week two, the Big 12 should have another big week. The toughest game on the slate looks to be Texas' home game with BYU. The Cougars dominated Texas in Provo last September, a result that led to the firing of then-defensive coordinator Manny Diaz. Now the Cougars come to Austin, and after watching the Longhorns dominate the Mean Green last weekend, the Cougars should face a much tougher UT defense. Strong hopes this unit won't give up 259 yards rushing to Cougars quarterback Taysom Hill as it did a year ago. The most intriguing game in terms of venue has to be Oklahoma's short trip to play at Tulsa. Memorial Stadium in Norman, Oklahoma holds 82,112. Skelly Field at H.A. Chapman Stadium in Tulsa holds 30,000, making it the toughest ticket in Tulsa this weekend. The Sooners haven't played in Tulsa since 2007 and both teams are coming off victories. The Sooners handled Louisiana Tech with ease, and Tulsa needed double overtime to fend off Tulane in the American Athletic Conference opener for both teams. Part of what pushed the college football powers that be to go to a four-team playoff to decide the national championship was SEC fatigue. But after the first weekend, even the most ardent Southeastern Conference hater would have a hard time keeping Texas A&M and Georgia out of the Final Four if the decision had to be made today. Absolutely no one saw the Texas A&M 52-28 blowout of South Carolina coming, and if they say they did, they're lying. Sophomore Kenny Hill stepped into the enormous shoes of departed Heisman Trophy winning quarterback Johnny Manziel and broke Manziel's team record for completions, hitting 44 of 60 for 511 yards and three touchdowns with no interceptions against a top 10 team on the road. Those 44 completions, by the way, were the second most in SEC history. Suddenly, a team that was a preseason pick to finish in the middle of the pack in the SEC West has to be considered one of the favorites to win the division. In the East, Georgia Bulldogs tailback Todd Gurley put on a performance that earned him National Player of the Week as he ran for 198 yards and three touchdowns on just 15 carries in a 45-21 home win over Clemson. Gurley also had an electrifying 100-yard kickoff return for a touchdown in the game. If the Dogs can duplicate that performance at South Carolina on September 13th, The East better look out. The up-tempo spread offense continues to be Alabama's kryptonite. The Tide couldn't handle it versus Auburn and Oklahoma at the end of last season, 
and they struggled against a much improved West Virginia team last Saturday in Atlanta. The 365 passing yards from West Virginia quarterback Clint Trickett were the second most allowed by a Nick Saban defense at Alabama. And though Blake Sims had a solid performance at quarterback for the Tide, Saban says the competition with Jacob Coker will continue. It probably doesn't matter who the quarterback is when two of your running backs rush for 100 yards and you have a 100-yard receiver. LSU looked like the young, inexperienced team they are for two and a half quarters against Wisconsin, but Les Miles is still the Mad Hatter. With his team down 24-7 early in the third quarter, he called for a fake punt on fourth and four on the LSU 44. They converted and went on to four straight scoring drives as the Tigers came back to win 28-24, running Miles' record to 11-0 in season openers at LSU. The Tigers have many mistakes to correct, but it's much more fun to make those corrections after an emotional win. Arkansas showed improvement against the defending SEC champion Tigers at Auburn. The Razorbacks picked up where they left off last season, running the ball well, and there was some improvement in the passing game. But the Razorbacks just could not stop Auburn's high-powered offense, even without starting quarterback Nick Marshall, who sat out the first half with a suspension. Cameron Artis Payne rushed for 122 of his 177 yards in the second half, showing he was a more than capable replacement for the departed Heisman finalist Trey Mason. This weekend is cupcake weekend for most of the league with the only really interesting matchups involving East Carolina at South Carolina. How will the Gamecocks respond after their embarrassing loss to the Aggies a week ago? And the Ole Miss Rebels, who struggled at home against Boise State, travel to Nashville to meet the Vanderbilt Commodores, who laid a big fat egg in Derek Mason's debut as the head coach. I'm Brian Houston for RattleAndHumSports.com. Thank you for watching the 2014 Coaches Cabana Halftime Show, presented by Rattle and Hum Sports.